Hey guys and welcome to the video. Today I wanted to do a quick walkthrough of using Argo CD to deploy workloads to Kubernetes. As most of you know, I'm currently running Rancher Kubernetes on my home lab server and I was using Proxmox for a little bit but decided to switch fully to Harvester, which is SUSE's hyperconverged solution for um, you know running virtual machines. I have a video about Harvester that you can watch. It is a really great alternative to Proxmox. I've been really happy with it. If you're more focused on Kubernetes, then it's really the way to go. Um, I actually got TrueNest Scale running on Harvester, but I'll save that for another day. So it's not just to run Kubernetes, it's also to run other virtual machines. Um, but anyway, before we dive in, make sure to like and subscribe. I'm trying to get more videos out about my home lab in the next few weeks as well as my review of the Unified Dream Machine Pro, which I just purchased today. Finally came back in stock. And if you like this video and found it helpful, make sure to share it with your friends as well. Okay, let's get started. So what exactly is Argo CD and why would you want to implement it um, you know, in your company or your home lab, where we are? Um, in order to understand Argo CD, of course, we first have to understand what GitOps is. I like to think of GitOps as DevOps with the main source of truth being Git, um, but we'll get into that. GitOps removes the hassle of deploying manifest via kubectl or kubectl or kubectl, whatever you want to call it. I like to call it kubectl. Since the main source of deployments and resources is Git, changes can be triggered when there is a new commit or a change made to a resource. In the example shown above, let's say I wanted to change a Kubernetes service. I would first make the change locally. Next, I would save the manifest and redeploy from my local machine using kubectl. After that, you're probably going to want to save the changes you made to the manifest to either GitHub or to your cloud provider, wherever you store your deployments, basically. And lastly, you'll want to check the state of the new deployment. Almost nothing about this process is automatic, so let's take a look at how our Argo CD will automate almost all of this. To start off, you need to have all your resources that you want deployed with your application on a GitHub repo. This could include services, persistent volume claims, deployments, and ingress routes. Whenever you make a change to any resource, you will do so in GitHub. Once you commit changes to GitHub, Argo CD will see the changes and will update the manifest to reflect those changes. So let's go ahead and take a look at Argo CD in action on my demo cluster. So now we are in my demo cluster. Um, it's called Argo Demo. It's a rancher cluster with one node running on my harvester uh, server. So the only thing I've done in this cluster has I've installed Metal LB, and that's because we are going to be using the Argo CD web front end through a load balancer service, so we need that uh, set up in the cluster. But let's go ahead and read some of the documentation and get started on installing Argo CD. So first we need to uh, create a namespace, and that namespace is going to be Argo CD, and then we're going to apply this manifest right here from Argo CD GitHub, and that'll install Argo CD. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to make sure, yep, I am connected to the cluster. Now let's go ahead and apply this. So I created the namespace and I'm going to hit enter and it's going to install Argo CD to my cluster. Now if we go back to the cluster and check, we can see it's doing something in the logs right there. Um, there are a few things that we are going to want to do right off the bat. One of those is going to be we're going to change the service from just a regular service to a load balancer. They actually show you how to do that in here. So we're going to patch the service. I'm going to come in here because I'm uh, using PowerShell. I'm going to have to use this. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that Argo CD has been uh, installed successfully. So let's go in and see pods. We see a bunch of Argo CD pods spinning up. So I'm going to say, yeah, it's, it's ready to go. This last one's running. Um, so let's go ahead and patch that service like I was saying before. All right, so the service has been patched, and there's one more thing that we need to do. We need to grab the login from uh, kubectl. We're going to paste that in there, and this will give us the temporary login code that we're going to copy. All right, we're all set with that. Now what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to go to services, and then we're going to go to this Argo CD server service, and I'm going to hit the 443. I'm going to hit advanced, 
and your uh, default account is going to be admin and then you're also going to type in that temporary code that we were shown before. Okay, now that we've seen how to install um, Argo CD, what I want to do now is I want to show you how I have it set up in my home lab cluster. Um, so we're switching from the demo cluster to my home lab cluster here. And the setup is pretty simple. Um, I have Metal LB as my load balancing service. I have Longhorn as my storage. And I have Traffic as my reverse proxy. And all of my domains are on Cloudflare. I have a wildcard certificate, which is a brand new thing from Cloudflare. Okay, anyway, um, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead to my production Argo CD uh, installation. And as you can see here, I have one app right here, and that is going to be the Uptime Kuma app. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to install two new um, applications from my personal repository, and that is going to be SmokePing, like we were, um, I had a recent video about that. And then we're also going to do my little link about page. Um, if you've ever looked at my stuff, I have a about page that looks a lot like Linktree, um, but it's called Little Link. It's actually maintained by Techno Tim. He's a popular tech YouTuber, home labber. Um, but I use his Docker image and I made some tweaks to it and I deploy it to Kubernetes on my home server. So first let's go ahead and copy it and then we're going to go into Argo CD. We're going to name the application Little Link. We're going to use the sync policy as automatic and we're going to choose prune resources and self heal, prune last, and then we're also going to want to create a namespace um, instead of having to go through and create a namespace. It's, you don't have to do that. You can have it in your deployment um, as with a namespace resource, but this is really handy. Um, and then what we're going to do down here is we're going to choose the repository URL. It's going to be my personal. I already provided my credentials. Um, and then the path is going to be like we saw before. It's just going to be Little Link and the cluster URL and the namespace is going to be Little Link. Um, so super basic. Now what we're going to do is we're going to hit create. And this is going to go ahead and deploy. Oh, it already deployed everything to our Kubernetes cluster. That was really quick. Um, so let's go out to my about page and we can see this is what we just deployed. Um, super easy Docker container running in Kubernetes. Um, like I said, maintained by TechnoTim. Uh, but if we were to go and make changes on Git, for example, so if I were to, um, let's say, commit a change to that little link um, deployment. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna change um, my bio up here. I'm going to remove this and I'm just going to have my name up there and then what I'll do is I'll save it and then I'll commit um, and I'll say you know remove bio commit those changes now what's going to happen is we're going to go back into Argo CD and after a certain amount of time this is going to pull and find the changes but since I'm doing a demo right now I'm just going to hit refresh and you can see the changes are made and it's terminating this pod right here and it just created another one. So if we go back up to my about page, then we're gonna see that the changes were made here. Uh, it did remove my bio. That's, that's basically how Argo CD will pull the Git status or the Git state um, of the resources. And if it finds that one of the resources is out of date or not, um, uh, in sync with Git, then it'll go ahead and force push that. Um, you can use Argo CD manually um, as a manual sync policy, but that means you would have to hit that refresh button every time you made a change. Um, I'm not really into that. I think that things should be automatic. Um, but anyway, let's go ahead and uh, get back to, whoops, I didn't mean to go out of that. Let's go ahead and get back to my personal repository and we're going to now deploy uptime, or I'm sorry, no. We're going to now deploy smoke ping. Smoke ping measures your uh, ping on your home network. Um, so let's go back to Argo CD, and I'm going to hit new app. We're going to install it, pretty much the same thing we did as before. 
Um, we're gonna create a namespace. We're gonna keep going down and the path is gonna be smoke ping, plus the URL, and the namespace is gonna be smoke ping as well. So let's go ahead and hit create and we'll see the resources get built out. All right, and as you can see right now, the pod is coming up and that's gonna take a little bit longer because we have two persistent volume claims. Those are just built. Um, they're attached to the pod and we should see this pop up in just a second. Um, so the, the resources that were deployed were two persistent volume claims, one service, one ingress route, and then the deployment. And if we want, we can actually zoom in here and we can see logs. And it looks like it's just waiting to start. Um, and we could also see events here and a summary of what went on. We have a live manifest there as well. Um, but the logs seem to show that it's up. Um, so let's go ahead and go to the URL that I usually have smoke ping. All right, and we do see that smoke ping is up. Uh, now, as data comes in over time about my home network, then what's going to happen is uh, it's going to go to the, it's going to get stored on those persistent volume claims. Right now, there's the uh, persistent volume claims are brand new, so there's no uh, historical data for my my um, ping. Um, but anyway, yeah, super easy. And then if we were to make changes in GitHub, like I showed before, then those changes would be automatically reflected in uh, Argo CD and they would be synced um, automatically, as long as you choose that automatic sync policy instead of the manual sync policy. Um, but yeah, I use Argo CD when I, when I first spin up a cluster, it's super easy. I just have my applications um, in Git, um, and then I, I make changes and use Argo CD to push those changes. It's a lot easier than having a manifest file, updating it locally, and then pushing it to Git, and then pulling it down to Git, and then applying with kubectl apply. It just doesn't make sense in uh, 2022 anymore to do that. Maybe back in the early days of kubectl when we didn't have Argo CD, or uh, uh, I think the other one is um, Flux. Uh, but GitOps is a great way to deploy resources and handle changes to resources automatically. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you subscribe. Um, that'll be it for me today. Uh, my next video should be my Unified Dream Machine Pro review. Uh, that'll be fun. Can't wait to get that in. And I'm hoping that uh, I can get a, a, another video about Harvester and how I'm running TrueNet Scale on there, but uh, let me know in the comments what you want me to cover. Anyway, have a great day. Peace.